Oh my god. We're all going to die. We're all going to die, folks. Just kidding, folks. I don't think we're all going to die. At least certainly not as a result of that. But it is exciting, isn't it? There was an M-Class solar flare and an associated coronal mass ejection. Please don't conflate the two. Solar flares are X-ray photons. Coronal mass ejections are primarily hydrogen nuclei, otherwise known as solar protons. Here's a close-up of the M-Class flare. There was actually two M-Class flares mixed in there. One of them sort of a long duration one, the other one's a shorter duration one. We also saw another relativistic proton event. We'll cover that in our in-depth fields and features segment where we look at things like sunspots, coronal holes, and CMEs. So make sure you check out that additional content. Excellent view there. This is slowed down to 10, 10 frames per second here as opposed to 30 frames per second, the speed we were showing in the previous imagery. So that's the last 24 hours there. Here is yesterday and today so far. We do have a new sunspot rising down here. That's going to be known as sunspot 2984, I believe will be the name of that one. That's your colorized magnetogram from the SDO. Here's an additional 24 hour video. 304 angstroms ionized helium and quite a bit of ionized helium there. All those bright white areas, those are very high helium regions. And yes, the sun produces a lot more helium around solar maximum than it does at solar minimum. You can also see that couple of flares there, the first one inducing a large coronal mass ejection, which indeed does appear to have an earthly directed component. Most of it expected to miss Earth, but I believe there is a portion of it that we can expect to strike Earth in about two days from when we recorded this video, which was Sunday morning, April 3rd, 2022. Here's another slow-mo of setting region sunspot 2975. There you can see all that high-speed plasma ejecting there. Just spectacular imagery. We compile it daily. And thanks for tuning in. Congratulations on realizing that the channel exists. So the 10.7 centimeter radio flux, the most proportional data set to sunspot number now at 143 solar flux units. One solar flux unit equals 10,000 joules. That's radio flux density. And check out the higher highs and higher lows in the past few months. Just spectacular. It's called Solar Cycle 25. The red line down here is the sunspot number. The black line up here is the 10.7 centimeter radio flux. NOAA expecting some additional geomagnetic unrest Later in the day today, no indication as to what that is from. I don't know if that's a coronal hole high-speed stream or another expected coronal mass ejection strike, but that's the Space Weather Enthusiast Dashboard's report. Let's briefly talk about MENSA. Yeah, MENSA. It stands for Make Earth Not Suck Again. It's up to you. It's about personal responsibility, baby. We want you to make Earth not suck again and perhaps help us out by picking up some merch. The custom designs are very high resolution. We've even got mini skirts and leggings and a dress for the ladies out there. Tank tops, t-shirts, greeting cards. And I'm wearing the hat because I believe in making Earth not suck again. I try to do my part, and these videos are part of doing my part. Also, smashamash.com does our part in making Earth not suck again. You can find links right there at the Smasho merch link. 
Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. And consider becoming a member of the Smash Team if you'd like to support us in a Patreon esque fashion. We replaced Patreon with our own website with superior capabilities. Smashomash.com slash Smash Team. You can find links to all that at Smashomash.com. Next, Global Seismicity over the past 90 days. There's a nice convenient bar graph for you to show you a period of quite a bit of activity here over the past month. Three seven plus magnitude quakes happening, and here's the past 24 hours. So no major quakes here over the past 24. There were some five plus magnitudes like this 5.5 near New Caledonia, a 5.6 at the Loyalty Islands, also north of New Zealand there, Western Texas saw a 3.1. Shout out to our viewers from the Lone Star State. Like Germany, everything is bigger in Texas, yeah? Here is the other earthquake there from Tonga. This is a 5.2, yeah? Philippines also saw a 5.0. And it looks like we had a 5.1 in Argentina there. Also a 5.0 in Japan. So keep in mind, folks, any earthquake can be a foreshock. We even demonstrated this a few days ago. Any earthquake can be a foreshock. If you're in an earthquake-prone zone, know which building facades may collapse. If you decide to evacuate yours, have a bug out bag, BNS asset, not a liability in the event of a disaster. Speaking of disasters, let's move on to volcanoes. What's erupting? I'm wondering. So Suwanose Jima has exploded, or it's been exploding, producing an unknown size volcanic ash cloud. Semeru, located on the east Java Isle of Indonesia, Exploding 13,000 foot ash plume from Semeru, flight level 130. Flight level 070 from Dekono on the Isle of Halmahera as it explodes. Agung now back on the list. Agung exploding on the Isle of Bali. Flight level 120, it's a 12,000 foot volcanic ash plume from Agung. Fuego exploding, flight level 150 over Guatemala from Fuego. Sangay exploding as well as Revenador. 20,000 foot ash plume from Sangay, 15,000 foot ash plume from Revenador over the country of Ecuador. Saab and Kaya were unable to detect. Please don't pull out the caldera. Please do visit the links and support the channel. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Once again, congratulations on realizing that the channel exists. Don't forget to Mensa. Make Earth not suck again. May that solar wind be at your back. And I've been your host, Dan, aka Smash or Mash, signing off from the Smash News Network, least posted name in news.